Let me paint a little picture for you. You go to a steakhouse. You're with another person. Maybe your wife, your lover, your BFF. You order a couple steaks and a couple vegetable sides. The bill comes back and it's $250 for that. No, but what if I told you we could do it for this price right here? That is but cheaper. Quick note before we start, I have to tell you, I was featured on Harper Bazaar's Food Diaries where like Lil Yachty went on there and he was like, here's everything I eat in a day or Binging with Babish went on there. He's like, here's everything I eat in a day. I'm on there, I was featured and there'll be a link in the description to watch it. So if you're ever wondering what Papa eats in a day, uh, aside from all the other crazy stuff like a regular day to day, click the link in the description and enjoy. Anyway, onward with the video. I wanna make sure that I have what I'm saying backed up with a uh, fat actuality with facts. So let's go to a steakhouse and uh, figure this out. We're on the way to a uh, uh, steakhouse. Well, we'll order two steaks and a couple sides. I'm expecting it to be over the 200 marker. At the end of the day, a reasonable meal, you know, sometimes we wanna go out and splurge and that's totally fine. Steakhouse, totally fine. I'm just presenting the idea of, is it worth this price? Okay. We're done. We ate, it was actually not bad. The food was actually pretty good. We got two steaks, we got three sides. I wanted to get normal asparagus. They brought out fried asparagus, whatever it is what it is. The total price was 222. And then plus tip, obviously you gotta give at least a decent tip. So $50 tip. So the total comes out to $272.45. Okay, signed truly yours. Rostal King. I understand a restaurant's always gonna be more expensive, but like we got three vegetable sides and two steaks for almost $300. I think we can do better than that. <laughs> okay, so we're back. You see what I mean, right? Like you guys understand where I'm coming from with this. You've got like steamed asparagus, hollandaise, very basic stuff, a steak cooked with a little bit of butter and, and that's it. The astronomical price is, I don't know why people still think that this is worth it. Look, the restaurants that I've worked at, the restaurants that I've been to, for that same dollar amount, you could have a completely different, more intense, more culinary experience Probably for a little less. So with all that said, let's do this, shall we? Okay, so we're gonna do our best to keep the price as low as possible without skipping on too many of the classic ingredients. But given what we're competing with, I don't think that'll be too hard. First things first, we need to get our mashed potatoes. Mashed. Get three pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes, peel the skins off of each and every lovely little feller, cut those potatoes into nice two inch chunks, toss them in a pot of water, season that generously with salt, and bring to a boil. Now those guys are gonna cook for about 10 to 15 minutes or until easily pierced with a fork, but not mush. Now while that's cooking, add three quarters of a cup or 170 grams of salted butter to a small sauce pot. I use salted just because it makes it easier to season them properly, but you can use unsalted too. It's a correctional thing. I'm trying to work some magic, I don't know. Along with half a cup or 120 milliliters of whole milk. Place it on the stove over medium heat until hot and the butter is melted. Now drain your potatoes and in the same pot, add the cooked potatoes back, then begin mashing them with a handheld masher, season to taste with salt, then add your butter and milk mixture, then just keep mashing until everything is as smooth as you can get it. Finally, add half a cup or 125 grams of sour cream, stir together until well incorporated, and finish with half a bunch of very thinly sliced fresh chives. Season again with salt and pepper to taste, and remember to season your potatoes nicely, okay? You're gonna need more than you think. No more under seasoned mashed potatoes, please. It makes a big difference. Now next up is an old classic, asparagus with hollandaise. For the asparagus, cut off the woody bottoms first, then using a peeler, peel the lower two thirds of each asparagus spear. You don't need to peel all the way down to the core, just the first little outer layer of skin. I prefer to do this because it makes the bottom a little more tender and they tend to soak up a little more juice and seasoning this way. Now place this in a roasting tray, drizzle with a little bit of olive oil to coat, season to taste with salt, add in any fresh herbs of choice. I used fresh thyme. Oh, and uh, don't forget some fresh cracked black pepper too, if you're feeling a little bit crazy today, buddy. Sorry, that stupid joke. Then toss into an oven set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius for 15 to 18 minutes or until cooked through, but with a little bit of that nice snap left. Right, so on the hollandaise thing, a lot of people struggle with this, but I have a simple trick to make it much easier. First add half a cup or 170 grams of salted not unsalted, butter to a small pan. We use salted just because sometimes seasoning hollandaise, it doesn't dissolve and this way the salt is already dissolved. Now you're gonna heat that over low heat until very gently melted. We don't want this super hot, just warm and melted. Separately in a blender, add three large egg yolks and half of a large lemon worth of lemon juice. Blend the yolk and the juice together on medium speed until it turns a pale yellow color. Then while continuously blending, slowly stream in your butter. Now take it easy on this one, all right? Don't just dump it all in. If you go nice and slow, then once all the butter is added, you'll have a lovely hollandaise awaiting you below. 
Feel free to season it with a little pinch of cayenne, potentially extra salt, but you shouldn't need it. Then pour it into a small thermos, close it, and keep it warm. Make sure to always keep your hollandaise warm and use it within an hour of making it. Now we all know the classic steakhouse vegetables. Here we've got two carrots, one zucchini, and one yellow squash, which to be honest at this point, is basically just yellow zucchini texture-wise. I don't know, it's an unpopular opinion, but. Just cut those bad boys into strips by first cutting them into half inch thick planks, then cutting those planks into half inch thick bars. Now, if your vegetables are too long, obviously I cut mine in half here to make them a little shorter, but that's up to you. Repeat that with all your vegetables and look at that. Now, before you cook those, let's first get our steaks put together. You can choose whichever budget steak cut you want, which you can see in my steak but cheaper guide. There'll be a link in the description for that. <laughs> But I used these two thick New York strip steaks, which totaled out to about $15 per steak because they were on sale. I prefer to let my steak sit at room temp for 20 minutes prior to searing. I know that's been debunked, but I can't help myself. Either way, make sure to pat your steaks completely dry with a paper towel. You don't want any moisture left on them. Then get yourself a nice large skillet, place it on the stove, add enough oil just to coat the bottom, place it over medium high heat. And once that's ripping hot and the oil's about to start smoking, generously season your steaks with salt and pepper on both sides. Then add your steaks immediately to the pan and sear for about three minutes or until you get a nice gorgeous deep brown crust. By the way, make sure your steaks are at least one to one and a half inches thick, otherwise they'll overcook during this part. Now flip each of those, then sear for one more minute, then add a couple crushed garlic cloves, left whole, and a fresh herb of choice. This one is rosemary. Along with a quarter cup or 56 grams of unsalted butter, then just baste your steaks repeatedly with that butter. Don't stop, you know, get a nice, nice flow. You want a little bit of foaminess when you're basting until it reaches your desired cook level. I cook one of these medium rare and one medium, which I don't consider to be proper, but certain people like it. Not judging you, I'm just, I, I prefer medium rare. I don't know. Now pull those steaks out and let them rest for five to eight minutes. Pour out any burnt oil that remains in the pan, but don't clean the pan. We want that beautiful beefy fond left in there. Then add two tablespoons of butter back to the pan. Heat that over medium heat. Once it's nice and hot, add your vegetables from earlier, season to taste with salt and saute until they're cooked to a nice snappy al dente, about five minutes or so. Now we've got all of our stuff set up. Now all there's left to do is slice that steak of yours. You can do it thick or thin, up to you. Just make sure that the cuts are as even as you can make them. Plate up your beautiful vegetables. Get your asparagus laid out on a plate. Top with a generous dressing of your hollandaise. Such a beautiful sight. Garnish it with some thinly sliced chives, a little sprinkle of cayenne, and some fresh cracked black pepper. Plate up those mashed potatoes. Hit it with a fat knob of butter and fresh cracked black pepper. Some more fresh chives because I freaking love chives. Now that right there looks like a beautiful classic steak dinner meal with a total price coming to this number right here in comparison to this price from the steakhouse that we went to. Now I would note that when we went to the steakhouse, we did include three drinks. So you can take off about $35 from that. Oh, and look at that, still winning. Now let's see if the taste compares as nicely as the cost. We got all this, all right? This is enough for two people, three people maybe, two. Huge New York strips, a fatty of mashed potato. You got a medley of vegetables, and you have your classic old school asparagus with hollandaise. I like to call these space potatoes because when you take a bite, you're gonna go into outer space. I have probably four or five videos on steak, medium rare, basted in butter. It's my favorite way to go. Fatty, it's juicy, it's salty, it's got that classic restaurant steak. Wait. It's basted in a boatload of butter. Vegetables, you know, they're vegetables. What we did, our little filler, by cooking it in the same butter that was left behind from the steak, you got that brown butter flavor, it's meaty, beef fat in there, and it's also like light and refreshing at the same time. And last, but certainly not least, are these asparagus. You get a perfectly cooked little spear of asparagus. The tips are a little crispy, it's got some charred flavors to it. All of this put together comes together at this price right here. Now wait, you're thinking, Josh, this is but cheaper. How is it not $1? If you think you're gonna make a steak dinner for $1, you can get the, you can turn 360 degrees and get out. The, the point is this price compared to this price, astronomical difference. You can make it at home just as good as the restaurants. This is the secret. These are the basic techniques that you need to do to recreate it at home for much less of the cost. But do you wanna know what else is an extra thicky, juicy steakhouse meal? B-roll. Is it so we went to the restaurant we saw the bill we came back 
We made the food. We compared the prices. It's, it's astronomically different. Obviously, when you make stuff at home, everyone knows that that's probably gonna be cheaper. I don't want this to seem like some sort of a cop-out, but I do wanna paint one thing, which is I like steakhouses. I go there, it's, it's a fun time to be there with your friends, your family, I get it. I'm not pushing them out completely. I don't wanna on them for no reason. Look, there's nothing wrong with going to a steakhouse. If you're the type of person that may not be able to afford right now to go out to a steakhouse, you can have it at home for an affordable cost. You can still have that experience for an affordable cost. So whether you go or not, that's up to you. I'm not on anybody, but I do want you to know that the option is there. All you need is technique and a little bit of know-how. Wanna see more requests for Butt Cheaper? We get a lot for Butt Better, but what do you wanna see on Butt Cheaper? What do you wanna see made cheaper? What is something that's commonly expensive that you wish wasn't that price or you don't think is worth that price because I guarantee you we can make it for a lot less. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye.